Everyone is talking about AI right now, including the CEO of IBM. He recently mentioned that 7,800 of new job openings were now frozen because he expects AI to be able to fill those jobs. Those are big numbers. Now, how serious is this though? I mean, are we talking about rise of the machines here? Oh my God, look. I don't think we're there yet. However, AI is an important technology that we must consider in today's business environment. We must consider it in terms of hiring, in terms of using it, because I know that our competitors are using it. In today's video, I'll talk about how AI is impacting our businesses, how we have used it, and what we see with the technology going forward. With AI, there are many parallels to revolutions, evolutions within manufacturing, within business, etc. A couple of those are related to robotics and offshoring. Offshoring is different because with offshoring, it's almost exclusively focused on shifting labor overseas to be able to arbitrage labor costs. I think robotics is a very good parallel. Whenever robotics were getting introduced to the manufacturing environment, there was outcry from numerous stakeholders about how this was gonna take jobs and has it eliminated jobs? I mean, absolutely. We have to progress as a society. I mean, think about washing machines. Do we wanna go back to an era where we're washing our clothes by hands? But again, if we aren't going to desire and use technological advances, then that's actually a very dire position to take about the future of our society. From my perspective, when you hear about AI, the number one question I hear associated with it is how it will impact jobs. And the most direct question is, will it lead to a loss of jobs? Quite frankly, I don't see any way in which that does not happen. So I, I fully expect AI to replace some jobs. Industry workers are calling for better pay and for protections for their work in the face of artificial intelligence. However, what is the net negative to that? I think here a good comparison is to lean manufacturing. A lean manufacturing was another one of those concepts people fear because it was expected that it would result in a loss of jobs. Well, that's not necessarily the case with lean. Whenever I would be involved in lean manufacturing projects, the goal would always be not to displace workers, but to shift workers from one particular manufacturing cell to another. The parallel to AI in this circumstance is, is very compelling. We're in a world now in which almost all the companies I talk to are very stressed and, and very challenged by finding additional labor. If there is the potential to not eliminate workers, but to move them from one part of your organization to another due to AI, that can be a win for everyone involved. As you might expect, there are definitely some jobs that are deemed to be safer from AI as opposed to those that feel more in danger. In talking about the ones that feel like they're more in danger, it's the repetitive tasks. It's the tasks that are done over and over again without the need for human interaction, without the need for customization based off of different variables or, or different events happening. Think about things like you know customer service. We've all interacted with chatbots for customer service, even though we, we might not like it. Marketing and advertising copy are one or two areas that are definitely seeing a lot of use of AI. Email marketing is a huge area where we're seeing a proliferation of, of AI. On the flip side of things, my view is that the more human interaction that is required, the safer the job. You know, I would never expect a business owner to say, Nick, we really want to sell the business to four pillars. We're going to do everything via email without ever having met in person. Quite frankly, that would send off huge warning bells and, and red flags for me that the, that the seller didn't want to meet. And so uh, again, you know, those, those are the types of situations in which we feel are better protected from AI because there has to be that human element of one person sitting across the table from another or, you know, groups of people working together. We talk talk a lot about the potential positives of AI, but I also feel like there are a few negatives, ignoring the negative component of eliminating jobs for folks. I also feel like it can depress creativity. If we have a repetitive process that we're using AI for, that process, at least in the early stage of AI, it is not going to be improved. It's going to be done the same way over and over again. That's fine because machine computational power is, is relatively cheap and and we, we don't need to worry about processes being optimized whenever 
they're performed by a computer. But if you think about how we get better at doing our jobs, how we have breakthroughs in terms of a new product or service, typically that's because a person is doing that over and over and realizes that there might be a better way. Now, I think in some circumstances, we probably don't need a lot of innovation. There are just some tasks that are so repetitive that if we're just checking the box, that's all we're gonna need, all we're ever gonna need. Regardless, I, I still think we're running the risk in, in certain processes that we're using AI on that we're not going to have the benefit of a human doing that and analyzing that and just innately coming up with a better way to do things. Similarly, I think that there's the potential for decreased differentiation. You know, I mentioned earlier that marketing and advertising copy is a big area where we're seeing AI proliferate, which is fine. However, if we're all using the same AI tool, you know, chat GPT, Bard, whatever it might be, the difference is really what prompts we are using to, to get that output. I think it's similar to something as simple as a Google search. You know, if all we're doing is creating a prompt and that the same AI tool is generating the output, I think we have the potential for a lot of very similar sounding. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. Advertisements, email marketing, et cetera, et cetera. That's not always going to be the case for certain circumstances. It actually might be better if the user experience, if you will, is, is consistent. You know, customer service is a big example there. But in situations where a human feel or a customized or unique approach is deemed to be a value to the receiver of that communication, we run the risk that AI is going to ultimately feel you know, very similar and non-unique to the viewers or receivers of that communication. We also have instances where there's been an overuse of technology. A great example is with CGI within movies. I'm sure we've all seen movies where the graphics are amazing and there's all this action and bullets, missiles, or car chases, all sorts of things going on. Your take or your response isn't, wow, that's really cool. Your response is, that just looks so overdone impossible, I'm partially turned off by that. It's not what I'm really looking for. You know, on the flip side, I mean, I think a good example of, of, of not overusing CGI are, are like the Mission Impossible franchise. I, I think we've heard Tom Cruise talk numerous times about he's very involved in, in the stunts because his perception and his belief is that, you know, doing everything through CGI really weakens and lessens the experience. I couldn't agree more and I think CGI is a great parallel to how we can get to a situation where the overuse of AI will lead to a lessened experience on the part of the viewer or the receiver of that message. In these movies, they're still using technology, but they're using technology to enhance live action. They're not using technology to create the action. I think that that's a big distinction. Finally, spend a few minutes talking about how we have actually used AI in some of our portfolio companies. Pretty simple, but it actually saved a ton of time and was very effective. With one of our portfolio companies, we were going through an audit by a new potential customer. Huge audit taking months and months and I don't know if any of the viewers have gone through an audit like this, but our experience was always that we were making all this progress. They said, this is the last hurdle you have to jump through. And then, oh, we've got this other hurdle. And by the way, there were probably two or three hurdles after that. Anyway, the hurdle of the day, if you will, for this particular customer was that we needed policies in place for all these various different situations that didn't really apply to us. We needed a different section within a quality manual, a confined space policy to whenever we were working in confined spaces, even though we didn't have any confined spaces within the plant. All these different manuals, some safety, some quality, most of which just really didn't have any applicability to what we were doing, else we probably would have had them in the first place. Anyway, options were to write those by hand, they were to use a consultant to develop those, or the third option was that we tried and tried successfully to use AI. It was actually my partner on, on one example that used it to write a new section of a quality manual, was gone for five or 10 minutes, came back with a five to 10 page new section that checked all the boxes for what the customer was looking for and turned out to be a really efficient and effective outcome that 
checked all the boxes and was exactly what we needed. AI is a essentially a force to be reckoned with. I don't think any business owner has the luxury of being able to ignore it completely. As with many technologies, it's going to have its strengths, it's going to have its weaknesses. It's also going to evolve and most likely improve over time. You know, what we're using AI for today might be or probably will be totally different than what we are using AI for tomorrow. At the end of the day though, we might like AI or we might hate it, but chances are not all of your competitors are probably using it, but a good deal of your competitors are going to use it. And my belief is those competitors that are using it are going to have a leg up on you. If you want to be as competitive as possible, I wouldn't urge you to abandon all else and jump into AI, but I would strongly encourage you to learn about the technology, think about your business, and see how you can use AI effectively to stay at the very worst in line with your competition, but hopefully to get another step ahead. Well, if you're like my wife, then you would probably think that AI might be better at making these videos than I am. However, if you like the human touch with all of its imperfections, please hit the like and subscribe.